ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله by the bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we were able to finish al-qawa'id al-arba' sharh qawa'id al-arba' by the great imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab as it was explained by the fadil to shaykh al-allama shaykh salih al-fawzan alhamdulillah we were able to finish sharh al-qawa'id al-arba' now we would like to begin بإذن الله تعالى في تعليق على نواقد الإسلام the explanatory notes upon the nullifiers of Islam and the text of the book was also written by Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab رحمه الله تعالى I'm reading from the explanation of the Fadil to Sheikh Al-Allama Sheikh Ahmed Al-Najmi Rahimahullah Ta'ala This book is a book that is tremendous Like Kawad Al-Arba' It is small in its size But it is tremendous in its value And the meanings that are contained therein And it is a subject that it is incumbent and it is a must upon the Muslims to know and to be familiar with. So these are one of those fundamental topics that every Muslim has to know about. Every Muslim has to know about. The Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he begins the book by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He says, I'lam anna nawaqid al-Islam Ashratu Nawaqid. He said that no, have knowledge. And as we mentioned before, when the ulama utilized the likes of this kalima i'lam, this is to draw one's attention. To, to draw one's attention and to indicate that that which is about to be said is of significance. That which is about to be said is extremely important. He says, I'lam anna nawaqid al Islam Ashratu Nawaqid. That he said, no, have knowledge that verily those things which will nullify a person's Islam, then there are ten. There are ten nullifiers of a person's Islam. Ten nullifiers. وَقَالَ الشَّيْخِ صَالِحِ الْفَوْزَانِ الشَّيْخِ صَالِحِ الْفَوْزَانِ Inside of his explanation. Again, we're going to be basing the explanation for this class upon the ta'aliq ala nawaqid al-islam by Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi but from time to time we will refer to the explanation of Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan ahmedullahu uh, ta'ala so Sheikh Salih he mentions inside of his explanation 
النواقض جمع ناقض that the word نواقض is the plural of ناقض نعم so the, the singular is ناقض and the plural is نواقض so the, so, the, so the singular is ناقض and the plural is نواقض the Shaykh he says in explaining well, what does this word mean النواقض which is the plural of ناقض what does it mean? He says, well, here, المبطلات, it is that which will render something null and void. So, a naqib is something that will render something else null and void. Naam. It will cancel it out. The Shaykh, he says, مثل نواقب الوضوء. It is similar to the nawaqib of الوضوء. Those things that will break the wudu. So those things that will break the wudu, these are called al nawaqib wudu. Al nawaqib al wudu. The nullifiers of wudu. And for example, it is like passing wind or going to the bathroom and the like. These are the things that break the wudu. So when we Understand it from this standpoint, then we start to realize exactly what is a naqib. Because it's that which will render something else null and void. So, for example, the nawaqib al wudu, those things that will nullify the wudu, like we mentioned, passing wind or uh, going to the bathroom. When a person goes to the bathroom, that's a naqib from the nawaqib al wudu. Right? Does the person's wudu remain when he goes to the bathroom? No. It, it's over. His wudu is over. Now he has to make the wudu again. Right? So we start to see the correlation now when we say nawaqibul islam. Those things that will nullify the islam. Now we see this is, a, this is serious now. This is something that will come and it will nullify an individual's islam. It will nullify an individual's Islam. And no one accepted Islam to leave Islam. Right? No one accepts Islam to leave Islam. So therefore we have to know what are those things that will nullify the Islam so that we can stay away from them. So that we can avoid those things that will nullify an individual's Islam. These al-nawaqib you find, as the Shaykh he mentions, to summa bin nawaqib they have been called an nawaqib right? And also to summa bi asbab ridda. It has also been called the causes for apostasy or the reasons for apostasy. Okay? So these nawaqib, they've also been called what? Al asbab ridda. So the Shaykh says to summa bi asbab ridda. The reasons or the causes for apostasy. What to summa bi anwa It has also been called the categories of apostasy. The categories of apostasy. In other words, those things that will make a Muslim a non Muslim. Those things that will make a Muslim a non Muslim. So then, the question comes now. What is a dalil that a Muslim could become a non-Muslim? Right? Because you have many Muslims who it is as if they believe that it is impossible for a Muslim to become a non-Muslim. And you find this uh, understanding or you find this mentality amongst often a lot of people who were born and raised in Islam. A lot of people who were born and raised in Islam. They have this mentality that no matter what, I will always be a Muslim. That no matter what, I will always be a Muslim. And this is because a lot of times they look at Islam from a more cultural standpoint. Uh, they look at Islam as a, a piece of their heritage, right? And, and so on and so forth. 
they don't look at it properly. They look at Islam as because the land that I'm from, the, the people there are Muslim, so I'm a Muslim and I always will be a Muslim. But it doesn't require anything from me, from actions, nor should I have to stay away from anything no matter what, I'm always a Muslim, period. Can't nobody tell me no better. And a lot of people have this, they have this mentality, not realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mandated upon the Muslims certain actions and he has prohibited upon the Muslims other actions not realizing that it is possible for a Muslim to do things and then become a non-Muslim they don't realize this reality so what is the proof now to show us the possibility of a Muslim becoming a non-Muslim because we need proof we need proof right we need proof from the Kitab and proof from the Sunnah. We need proof before we accept anything when it comes to religious teachings. Before we accept anything, we need what? Proof. So we're saying that there are a nawaqib for Islam. That there are things that will nullify a person's Islam so that a person who used to be a Muslim will become a Kafir. So now what is the proof that it is even possible for a Muslim to become a kafir. What's the proof for that? From the proofs, from the proofs, as their proofs are many, from the proofs is Allah Ta'ala statement that can be found in Surah Al-Baqarah in its verse 217. It's very important. It's verse 217. Before mentioning this ayah, I advise all the students to remember the ayat that have been mentioned in class for those who have the ability to memorize uh, this small text and nawaqidul islam to memorize the small text the text itself fits upon one page if you make the print a little bigger it fits upon two pages that's it it's very small it's very small but it's tremendous and it's important now, so I encourage those who have the ability to memorize the text, to memorize all of the text, right? And for those who have the ability, don't wait for us to finish the book because you memorize point by point, but go ahead and memorize the whole book. Go ahead and memorize the whole book. Now, for those who they don't have the ability to memorize the whole book in a sitting, then memorize half of the book. Now, or memorize uh, a third of the book. Or memorize a quarter of the book. Remember now, it's only 10 points, right? So a quarter may be quite problematic. <laughs> uh, but you get the point. But likewise, for those who this is difficult even, then memorize two by two. Two by two, right? Or if this is difficult, then last but not least or maybe last at the least huh? memorize the points as we go over them memorize the points as we go over them now so if we go over as today inshallah time we go over point one then throughout the week memorize the point the first point the next class we go over the second point then out then the, the week following memorize the second point bismillahi time right but in addition to memorizing the text, also memorize the ayat that are mentioned throughout the course of going over the ex explanatory notes, inshallah ta'ala. Getting back to now, what is the proof that a, that a Muslim can go from being a Muslim to a kafir and what will be the reward or what will be the consequence of such? Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, and this was verse 200 and what? 17. Now. Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَرْتَدْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ فَيَمُوتْ وَهُوَ كَافِرْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allah Ta'ala says what means, and that verily those from amongst you who apostate from their religion, those from amongst you who leave Islam, who leave their religion, meaning they leave Islam, they apostate. And then they die upon that. Then verily, and they die, yani they die as disbelievers. 
then verily all of their deeds will be rendered null and void inside of the dunya and in the akhirah. Habitat a'maluhum. Their deeds will be rendered null and void. Batil. Gone. Right? Inside of the dunya and inside of the akhirah. And they will be the occupants of the hellfire. And they shall remain they shall remain therein forever. They shall abide therein forever. Naam. So this is the reward for one for the one who leaves Islam, who leaves Islam and be and goes to being a, a, a Jew or a Christian or a Buddhist or what have you. <clears throat> so therein establishes that what that a person could leave Islam, and it also informs us of the consequence of leaving Islam. So when one realizes that yes. A person could leave Islam. And that the consequences for leaving Islam is to stay in the hellfire forever. Then this will raise his attention that he needs to know what are those things that will make you leave Islam. He needs to know what are those things huh? so we stay away from them. وَقَالَ الْعَلَّامَ الشَّيْخُ صَالِحَ الْفَوْزَانِ رَضَى اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He says, وَهَذَا تَحْذِيرْ شَدِيدٍ He said, and this is a tremendous warning. This is a tremendous warning من الله سبحانه وتعالى للمؤمنين. This is a tremendous warning from Allah تعالى to the believers, as the believers are being addressed. ومن يرتد منكم. And whoever apostates from amongst you, Sheikh Saleh Fauzan, from Allah تعالى says this means أيها المؤمنون. And that those who apostate from you, meaning you, O believers. منكم أي. What does منكم mean here? Who is being spoken to? The believers from you, O believers. Naam. Then Allah Ta'ala says, And dinihi fayamut wa huwa kafir. Who apostates from his religion, uh, and he dies, and, and he dies as a disbeliever. Shaykh Fawzan, Allah Ta'ala, he says, Walam yatub qabla mawt wa yarji' ilal Islam. He said, meaning that he did not repent before his death, nor did he come back to Islam. So this is a good uh, glad tidings for the one who has been afflicted with this calamity of leaving Islam. That you can come back. You can come back. Naam. So the Shaykh he says, so it means that he dies and he's a kafir, meaning because he did not repent. He did not repent prior to his death, nor did he come back to Islam. Nor did he come back to Islam. The Shaykh he says, فَقَدْ So therefore, verily, most definitely, Allah Ta'ala he says, حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ So therefore, most definitely, his deeds will be rendered null and void. His deeds will be rendered null and void. They don't count. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Allah Ta'ala he says, inside of the dunya and the akhirah, وَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And verily, these will be the occupants of the hellfire, and they shall be in their share, and they shall abide therein forever. They shall be there forever. Allah Ta'ala, He also says in Surah Muhammad, in Surah Muhammad, verse 25, Allah Ta'ala, He says, ala min ba'di ma lahum al-huda, as lahum wa amla lahum. Allah Ta'ala, He says what means, and that verily, those who apostate and they go back, those who go back and they apostate after the clear guidance have been made known to them, then it is the shaitan who has beautified for them their falsehood and who has and who gives them the prolonged false hope. The shaitan is the one who has beautified for them falsehood and he has given them a prolonged false hope. Naam. And this is the reality of anyone who may want to turn his back on the deen of al-Islam or anyone who turns his back and he apostates from the deen of al-Islam. It is because the shaitan had beautified for him their falsehood that they were upon and had given them a prolonged false hope. And this is again, we said in Surah 
Which surah? Muhammad. Muhammad. Nah, which verse? 25. Nah. So therefore we see from this that it is possible for a Muslim to leave the deen of al-Islam and the consequences of such, they are great. So therefore it is a must, it is incumbent upon every individual Muslim that they study and they learn the likes of these affairs so that they will not fall into uh, this evilness, they will not fall into this great destruction and the like. Which highlights again the fact that the people of the Sunnah, you find they are the most beneficial of the, of the Muslims of the Muslims and they are the most merciful of the Muslims to the Muslims. Because any Muslim that would hide this fact from the Muslims is an individual who has with him evil, is an individual who is upon misguidance. Anybody that would uh, avoid speaking about the likes of these issues and the like, then this is an individual who is evil, who does not intend for us any good, who does not intend for us any good. And we always have to point out the likes of this because we are living in a place that we are surrounded in the ocean of the likes of these individuals. We are surrounded in the ocean of the likes of these individuals who would never speak about those important matters of it tawheed and explain them to the people in the detail that as it comes in the kitab and the sunnah. They don't speak about it tawheed in the details. They don't speak about the shirk in the details and warn us away from the shirk. They don't speak about in details what is, what is Islam, what is Iman, what is Ihsan. They don't speak about in the details what is kufr, what is bid'ah, what is nifaq? They don't speak about these things in details. But at the same time, if politician so-and-so is running for office, they'll bring him to the masjid and let him speak to the people so you can go out and vote for him. They'll encourage you to vote. Wa'iyadu Even though the ulama, they explain, they say, the maqrutiyya kufr, that democracy is disbelief. They don't explain this to you. They encourage you with it. They don't explain to you the things that you need. But they keep shoving down your throats things that don't benefit you. And in fact, things that harm you. So it is a must that we are very mindful with regards to these facts and that we uh, remind ourselves of the danger of being with the people of innovation. And this is why from the methodology of Ahl Sunnah is that we avoid the people of innovation. We don't sit with them. We don't eat with them, we don't drink with them, uh, and the like, ma'am, because of the danger that is contained therein. This is just another illustration to show us how unbeneficial they are and how much danger there is that is with them, ma'am. So let no Muslim be confused into thinking that there is benefit with the people of innovation. There is no benefit with them whatsoever. Alakullin. The Imam goes on and he says, اعلم أن نواقض الإسلام عشرة نواقض الأول الشرك في عبادة الله تعالى. He said the first thing that would the first nullifier from the nullifiers of Islam is to associate partners in worship with Allah تعالى. <coughs> to associate partners with Allah تعالى inside of His worship. جل وعلا. وقال الله تعالى الله تعالى He says. إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء. And this is in Surah An Nisa, verse 116. Allah Taala He says what means, and that verily Allah does not forgive that partners be associated with Him, but He forgives from other than that to whom He pleases. The ulama they mention from them, Sheikh Saleh Abd Aziz Al Sheikh, حفظ الله تعالى that. In this ayah, some of the ulama of the past, like Imam Ibn Qayyim and his teacher, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahumullah ta'ala, they will bring these ayat upon their generality, na'am, because there's not mentioned here the type of shirk, whether it's shirk al-asghar or akbar, na'am. So they will bring them at times upon their generality so as to scare the people. And likewise you find Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad Abdul Wahhab in Kitab al-Tawheed also brings it upon his generality like this so as to scare the people. So as to scare the people from shirk period. Because there's not mentioned a particular type of shirk but it says all shirk is not forgiven. Right? 
Well, we know from the details, as the ulama, they explain that shirk al-azghar is not the same as shirk al-akbar. Okay? But in any event, all shirk you want to stay away from, period. Why? Allah Ta'ala, He does not forgive that shirk. Is, is, uh, he does not forgive shirk, meaning shirk al-akbar. He does not forgive the major shirk. The major shirk, like slaughtering for other than Allah, as the imam he mentions here as an example, right? Like slaughtering for other than Allah. This is major shirk. This is the type of shirk in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not forgive, right? So we see that if, a, that if Allah ta'ala does not forgive an individual, then this is a sign that that individual is what? Is a kafir. Because there are no Muslims who will be left unforgiving. There are no Muslims who will stay in hell forever. No Muslim will stay in hell forever. If a Muslim goes to hell because of some sin that they committed, some crime they committed, eventually they'll be forgiven and they'll be removed from the hellfire. Right? Eventually they'll be forgiven and removed from the hellfire. Right? Anyone who stays in the hellfire forever and they're not forgiven, this is because what? Because they're kafir. They're not a Muslim. Right? So we understand that those who make shirk, yes, this will nullify a person's Islam. This will make a Muslim into a kafir. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Allah Ta'ala, He says, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ and this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, and it's verse 72. Verse 72 from Surah Al-Ma'idah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means, And that verily those who associate partners with Allah, then verily Allah has made prohibited for them jinn. Allah has made heaven prohibited for them, and their abode will be the hellfire. And you won't find for the criminals any helper. You won't find for those who commit dhul any helper. The Imam he goes on and he says, وَمِنْهُ أَذَّبْحُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ يَذْبَحُ لِلْجِنْ أَوْ لِلْقَبْرِ He says, and an example of this major shirk is like to slaughter for other than Allah. Like the one who slaughters for a jinn or he slaughters for a grave. The one who slaughters for a jinn or he slaughters for a grave. Now, this is major shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa qala al Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi rahimahullah ta'ala inna min kitabat wal mu'allifat al Sheikh al Islam al Nafi'a. And verily from the writings and those things that were offered by the Shaykh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam, meaning Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, from those things that were offered from his writings and from his uh, books that are very beneficial, and nawaqid al-Islam al-Ashara is the ten nullifiers of Islam. Very beneficial book. The Shaykh says, وَإِنَّ مِمَّا يَنْبَغِي لِلْمُسْلِمْ أَنْ يَتَأَكَّدَ عَلَيْهِ and verily from that which is incumbent upon the Muslim is that they have a great concern and that they have an assurance yani, that they go over this and make sure they go over this book well. Right? All those things that he has to learn well and know good inside and out. And that he has to learn about these uh, nullifiers of Al-Islam. So that he will uh, not fall into anything from amongst them and he doesn't know. So that he does not fall into anything from amongst them and he doesn't know. Because individuals, yani, it's possible you can do something and you can fall into one of the nawaqid of al-Islam. You can fall into one of the nullifies of al-Islam and you don't know. Naam? Like those individuals in the time of the Prophet wasallam, who are making fun of the Prophet wasallam, and they were making fun of the Muslims and they were making fun of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were making fun of them Naam. Allah ta'ala he revealed with regards to them as, as is found in surah at-tawbah and his verse 65 and 66 Allah ta'ala he says قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Allah ta'ala he says and say to them O Muhammad 
Was it with Allah and his verses and his signs and with his messenger that you were making fun of? Was it Allah and his verses and his messenger and his, and his prophet, I mean his verses and his messenger that you were making fun of? That's what you was making fun of? Naam. Allah Ta'ala goes on and he says, لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم. Allah Ta'ala he says, say to them, don't make any excuses. Verily you have become kufar after you used to believe. Make no excuse. You see? Because people come now and they try to make excuses. They may fall into a nullifier, and this is a nullifier from the nullifiers of Islam. To make fun of the deen, as the Shaykh he mentions, this is a nullifier from the nullifiers of Islam. However, you find that it's quite possible a person can fall into this unknowing. So it's important that we know what are the nullifiers so that we can avoid falling uh, into them. Ma'am. The Shaykh he says, well, for awwal, Shaykh Ahmed al Najmi, Rahimullah Ta'al, he says, uh, so that the first one, وَأَهَمُّ تِلْكَ النَّوَاقِضِ The first and the most important uh, of these nullifiers, هُوَ الشِّرْبِ بِاللَّهِ That it is to associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. وَأَدِلَّ عَلَيْهِ كَثِيرًا And the proofs and evidence just which points to this, then they are many. مِنْهَا قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى And from them is Allah Ta'ala's statement, uh, as it can be found in Surah An-Nisa, Verse 116 It also can be found in the same surah Surah An-Nisa and his verse 48 Allah Ta'ala says la wa dhalika li man yasha. That really Allah does not forgive That partners be associated with him But he forgives from other than that to whom he pleases Naam So this is uh, A proof which points out the Harmful nature of shirk In that it will make a person ineligible to receive forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْهَا قَوْلُهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ حِكَايَ عَنْ عِيسَى عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ And also from this is Allah Ta'ala's statement informing us about what Isa alayhi الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ He said, when he said to his people, as Allah Ta'ala informs us, Ya Bani Israel, a'budu Allah. Isa, he said to the people, as Allah Ta'ala informs us, what means, O children of Israel, O tribe of Israel, worship Allah. Worship Allah. Naam. In this ayah is a tremendous refutation upon the Christians in particular, but it also extends to the Jews. And to the Jewish cults, uh, like the, the, the Hebrew Israelites, uh, and, and, and the like. Those who want to claim that they are upon Judaism and all this stuff, and in particular, the Christians. Uh, those who claim to follow Asa, Asa Because Asa, Asa he is informing the children of Israel, right? The Israelites, he's informing the Israelites to worship Allah and to worship Allah alone. To worship Allah and to worship Allah alone. And then he goes on, as Allah Ta'ala informs us, he says, uh, O children of Israel, worship Allah alone. He is my Lord and your Lord. He is my Lord and your Lord. فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَالُ الظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ Because verily, the one who associates partners with Allah, then Allah will make prohibited for him the Jannah. Paradise becomes prohibited for this individual. His abode will be the fire. And he will find no helper. You will find no helper for the criminals. You will find no helper for those who make bun, meaning those who make shirk. You will find no helper for them. And again, this is a Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 72. So we find here in this ayah that Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu salam, as Allah Ta'ala informs us, is educating the people, is teaching the people that they are to worship Allah and Allah alone, and they are not to make shirk. 
He's warning them from making shirk. He's warning them from associating partners with Allah and worship. So when one sees this, he realizes that any call, any religion, any da'wah that calls to shirk and at the same time tries to link itself to Isa ibn Maryam, then we know that Isa, alayhi salatu salam, he is free from this call, he is free from this religion. So we know that Isa is free from this because he did not teach mankind to pray to anyone except Allah. He did not teach mankind to worship anyone except Allah. He only taught mankind to worship Allah and to worship Allah alone. And he warned them from making shirk and he informed them of the severe penalty that the one who makes shirk will receive and that heaven will be prohibited for him. Heaven will be prohibited for him. Naam. So this is a great reminder to us and a great reminder to mankind and in particular those who claim to follow Isa ibn Maryam that if you truly want to follow him then you have to what? You have to become a Muslim. You have to become a Muslim as he was a Muslim. And also from the proofs and evidences which points to the fact that uh, the one who makes shirk or that shirk is a nullifier of Islam, the one who makes shirk is a kafir, is Allah Ta'ala's statement, وَمَنْ يَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر, And whoever calls upon another deity along with Allah, whoever calls upon a false deity along with Allah, لا برحان له, he ha, or لا برحان, لا برحان له به, he has no proof and evidence for this. Whoever calls upon something else along with Allah, he has no proof, no evidence for doing this. Uh, فَإِنَّمَا حِسَابُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ Verily you will find that his reckoning will be with his Lord. And then this is what I want you to pay attention to. Allah Ta'ala he says, إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ And verily he Allah does not make successful those who are disbelievers. So Allah Ta'ala in this ayah, he has called those who call upon others along with Allah as Al-Kafirun. He has called them disbelievers. He has called them disbelievers. So this is a proof that the one who makes shirk, then he is a kafir. And this is in Surah Al-Mu'minun in his verse 117. So again, this is Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 117. The Shaykh, he says, إِلَا غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ الدالة على أن المشرك لا يقبل منه عمل. He said, and other than that, from the ayat which points it to the fact that the polytheist, uh, his actions are not accepted from him. لا يقبل منه عمل صالح. His righteous actions are not accepted from him, and his uh, sins are not forgiven. His sins, his sins are not forgiven. حتى ولو كان من أقرب الناس in Allah Ta'ala even if they were the most closest people to Allah Jalla wa'ala even if they were the closest of the people to Allah Jalla wa'ala wa'adhamahum jahan inda wa'alahum maqaman inda even if they had the high status with Allah and the, yani the, the most magnificent of statuses with Allah Ta'ala if they were to make shirk they will lose it all. If they were to make shirk, they will lose it all. As Allah Ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Zumar, in His verse 65, Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَّا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطْوَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Allah says what means, and verily has been revealed to you, O Muhammad. And Muhammad is the best of mankind, right? as it was revealed to those who came before you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here in this ayah that as that it is being revealed to you, O Muhammad, as it was revealed to those who came before you. So who are those who are yani, being spoken about here in this ayah? Who are they? Those who had revelation revealed to them. Who are they? They are the... Huh? No, no, no. Those who had, uh, who had revelation. No, 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 no. What I mean, the ones who, now, the prophets, the ones who the revelation was revealed to them. 
talking about the prophets. So Allah Ta'ala is telling the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that it's been revealed to you, O Muhammad, as it was revealed to those prophets and messengers who came before you. Right? That even if you, O Muhammad, were to make shirk, then verily all of your deeds, most definitely, undoubtedly, all of your deeds will be rendered null and void. That even if you, O Muhammad, make shirk, then your deeds will be null and void. Just like if those prophets and messengers had made shirk, all of their deeds will be rendered null and void. So even the best of mankind, no matter what the status, how high the status, how high the level, so on and so forth, shirk is never tolerated, ever. It's never tolerated. But we know that what? That the Anbiya and the Rusul, and at the head of them, their leader, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, none of them ever made shirk. None of them made shirk. None of them made shirk. None of them. Not a single one. None of them made shirk. Naam. But as the lesson that we take from this, being the followers of the prophets and the messengers, is that if this is the case for those who are better than us, then most definitely this is the case for us. That if we make shirk, then no doubt our deeds are going to be written null and void. Because if the prophets and messengers made shirk, then their deeds are going to be written null and void. So if we fall into it, then no doubt, most definitely, unquestionably, our deeds are finished. They're done. They're no more. So we understand from this that shirk is not an option. Shirk is not an option. Now, and this is a lesson that is important. It is, it is vital. From the most vital of lessons. From the most essential of lessons. From the most beneficial of lessons is for us to know the nature and the true repugnant and heinous nature of a shirk so that we stay away from it. And we call mankind to staying away from it because the repercussions that come from it are tremendous. If we just recap now on just some of the repercussions that we have already mentioned is that one, a person won't be forgiven. Right? Two, Jannah will be made prohibited for them. Three, their final abode will be the hellfire. Four, all of their deeds will be rendered null and void. Any one of those is enough for us to stay away from it. Person comes to you and say, look, all the deeds that you ever did in your lifetime, I got a short shot way right now to get them all wiped out. Yeah? Yeah? Right? Automatically? No way. My deeds wiped out? No way. He tells you, okay, take that off the table. I got a short shot way for right now. You never get forgiven by Allah. You in? No way. Okay, short shot way that you go to hell forever. You in? No way. Don't want nothing to do with that. Right? So no matter what, how you look at it, any one of these by themselves is enough that we don't want nothing to do with it. The fact that a person never be forgiven, we want nothing to do with that. The fact that a person yeah, he will be in the hellfire forever, we want nothing to do with that. The fact that a person have his deeds written null and void, nothing to do with that. The person come and they say, okay, I, I struck out on the three. Look, I got I got one for you. Heaven will be made prohibitive for you. Can't go to heaven. Sure shot way that you will never get to heaven. You want it? No way. So any one of these is enough for us to say we don't want nothing to do with it. So when you understand that this is the nature of shirk, then we have to know what exactly what is shirk so we know to stay away from it. There's no way. We don't want nothing to do with this. We don't want nothing to do with this whatsoever. Naam. Alaykum salam. Naam. The shaykh, he goes on and he says, وَقَالَ عَنْ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ فِي سُورَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ بَعْدَ أَنْ ذَكَرَ عَدَدًا مِنْهُمْ and Allah he says, and Allah says in Surah Al-An'am, after mentioning Allah, excuse me, Allah says about the prophets, uh, Allah says about the prophets in Surah Al-An'am, after mentioning some of them or a number of them, Allah Taala He says, "Thalika huda Allah yahdi bihi man yasha min ibadi," and that this is the guidance of Allah whom he guides, whom he pleases from his servants with. He guides whoever he pleases from amongst his servants to this guidance. Then Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا 
لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And if they were to make shirk, referring back to, and if even those prophets were to make shirk, then their deeds will be rendered null and void. Then what they used to do will be null and void. All that what they used to do will be gone away. So we realize that what? That this reality is something that no one is no one is exempt from. No one is exempt from. Which further highlights what the danger of shirk. Which further highlights the danger of shirk and how shirk is not uh, a possibility, it's not a possibility whatsoever. وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَ And the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said قال الله تبارك وتعالى that Allah تبارك وتعالى he said and whenever we hear a hadith like this where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he narrates upon his Lord this is, this is what kind of hadith hadith Qudsi نعم, it's called Hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he narrates upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He narrates upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ, he has informed us that Allah ta'ala has said, أَنَا أَغْنَى شُرَكَائِ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ مَنْ عَمَلَ عَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ مَعِي فِيهِ غَيْرِ تَلَقْتُهُ وَالشِّرْكَ Allah ta'ala, he, he, he tells us as the Prophet ﷺ informs us here in his hadith, that has been collected uh, in Sahih Muslim, where he says that verily I am in no need that any partner be associated with me. He said, verily I am the one who is absolutely in no need that any partner be associated with me. He says, so whoever associates with me other than me inside of an action, whoever does an action and he associates with me other than me, then verily I have left him and have left his shirk. And verily I have left him and the shirk. So we learn now another angle here from this hadith of from the evil consequences and repercussions of his shirk is that Allah Ta'ala He says that verily He had left the person. Taraktuhu wa shirka. I've left him and his shirk. So Allah Ta'ala has abandoned the mushrik. Allah has abandoned the mushrik. And he has left that which he has made shirk in. So we see from this that what? That he's not rewarded for the deeds. He's not rewarded for the deeds in which he made shirk in. So he loses out reward for those deeds. So now we learn from this standpoint as well as that the mushrik is abandoned by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So now, is this something that we, we want anything to do with? Something that would earn you uh, that Allah Ta'ala will abandon you? No, no way. This is something that is harmful, something that is dangerous, the most destructive thing, the most harmful and dangerous thing. Bila shak wa bila ray. No doubt about it. The Shaykh, he says, he says, فَهَذِهِ adilla kullaha. He says, so that this proofs all of them. تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مَنْ أَشْرَكَ بِاللَّهِ شِرْكًا أَكْبَرْ يَدْعُوهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ لِجَلْبِ النَّفْعِ أو دفع الضر معتقدا قدرته على ذلك فإنه حين إذا يكون قد خرج من الإسلام من الإسلام. He says so that they, these proofs and evidences they, they point us to the fact and they are proofs that anyone who associates partners with Allah عز وجل who commits major shirk with Allah عز وجل by calling upon others along with Allah while believing that these individuals could give them benefit and could repel from them harm, by believing that they have the ability to do this, then verily, this individual, he has left the religion of Islam, or that this individual, he has left Islam. He has left Islam. Now, all these proofs of evidence is showing us that the one who makes shirk, Al-Akbar, then he has left Islam. He has become a kafir. And the Shaykh he says, Wa thalika, and as an example for this, because a person may say, okay, but well, what are some examples of shirk al akbar that if a person does it, he leaves Islam? So the Shaykh he brings an example. He says, Wa thalika, azza wa jal. And from this is to uh, 
is to slaughter for other than Allah Azza wa Jal. From this is to slaughter and to make sacrifices for other than Allah Azza wa Jal. لأن الله عز وجل لأن because Allah عز وجل يقول يقول للنبيه he says to his prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and this can be found in سورة الأنعام in his verse 162 and 163 so again this is verse 162 and 163 from سورة الأنعام الله تعالى he says قل إن الصلاة ونسك ومهيايا ومامات لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين. الله تعالى says what means and say to them O Muhammad that verily my prayer and my slaughtering and my life and my death belongs to Allah the Lord of the mankind jinn and all that exists. I do not associate any partners with him. I do not. Associate any partners with him, and this is what I have been commanded with, and that verily I am the first from the Muslims, and that verily I am the first from the Muslims. So the Shaykh he says, فَمَنْ ذَبَحَ الْجِنْ أَوْ الْقَبْرِ So whoever has slaughtered in the name of a jinn or for a jinn, or he has slaughtered in the name of a grave or for a grave, فَإِنَّهُ then verily he will be considered as one who has committed major shirk. He will be considered as one who has committed major shirk. Naam. And it will be considered as one who has committed disbelief or yani one who has a disbelief in the singling out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has a disbelief in the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, a disbelief of which will exit him from the religion a disbelief of which that will exit him from the deen of al-islam Naam. ala kullin we see ikhwa wa akhwat that the likes of these things are tremendously harmful Tremendously destructive. It is a must that we educate ourselves and that we educate our children and our families with regards to them so that they may be safeguarded and can avoid falling into shirk so that they can truly be benefited uh, by not only being taught what to do but also by being taught what not to do, not also being yani, uh, encouraged of what to do but also being uh, discouraged and warned away from those things in which will harm them and being informed of what they should avoid and to stay away from. This is something of tremendous importance. Uh, as we heard all of these ayat, many of these ayat, uh, we heard these many ayat, and there are more ayat on this topic. Naam. As you'll find, it's not a surah, rather it's not an ayah, except that you'll find therein uh, a tawheed, and you'll find therein a warning from the shirk. Uh, but it is incumbent, yani, that we not just memorize from the Quran and read from the Quran, but that we understand it. And then you start to see the wisdom in the ulama when they encourage that we teach the children the aqidah even before we teach them to memorize the Quran. Because uh, memorizing the Quran without understanding the likes of this uh, is a tragedy. And therefore you'll find the Quran will be a proof against you and not for you. So it's a must that we teach our children aqidah. How many of the people you find them being a hafidh of the Qur'an? Like uh, what has taken place or people who have familiar or claim familiarity with the Qur'an who have memorized portion of the Qur'an. Like that which has taken place unfortunately in Miami with that individual who has taken the children out to the graveyard for a dua session. Memorize many portions of the Quran, some of them maybe even half of the Quran, and then they're being called to this Sufism, they're being called to lights of this grave worship, uh, making dua for the awliya or to the awliya uh, and the like. A'udhu billah, making dua to the awliya. A'udhu billah. Naam. And these are people who claim the hold the Qur'an but obviously they don't understand nothing of what they have inside of their heads 
They don't understand in Surah Al-Fatiha that they recite in every rak'ah of every unit of their prayer. Allah Ta'ala says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Only unto you do we worship and only unto you do we ask for help and we seek from help. So this is a tragedy. And this highlights that we are in a time that we are in need of knowledge. We are in need of knowledge. We're not in a time where money is an issue. We're not in a time where degrees are issues. The Muslims have many degrees in many different fields. The experts have many different expertise in dunya, sciences and the like. The Muslims are very rich, very wealthy. Some of them most wealthy in the world, in fact. But yet you still find that our situation is as it is. And this is because of what? Because of the gross amount of ignorance that this time is plagued with. So we live in a time where we are in need. We are in need of knowledge. We are in need of people to have a concern to go and study and to seek the knowledge from the hands of the ulama. We live in a time where we have a need for that. Now, so this is an encouragement for the brothers and the sisters to educate their children and themselves first and foremost and, to, and their children uh, with their proper aqidah to truly try to understand the kitab and the sunnah so that they may live upon it. This is something that is a must. It is very important for us to do it, inshallah ta'ala. And also if they see from their children those who have the desire to want to study Islam, those who have the interest to want to study Islam, to encourage them and help them and don't discourage them. Don't discourage them. But you find people sometimes if the child wants to study Islam, they tell them, ah, you don't want to study Islam. Just, you know, be a good Muslim and be an engineer or be a good Muslim and yeah, be a doctor, be a good Muslim and, you know, be whatever. Why you, why, why, why you want to go study in University of Medina? Why you want to go study in Umm Qura? Why you want to go sit with the Mashaykh? Why don't you go to Rutgers? Why don't you go to, you know, whatever, yani. Uh, school, go to this school, that school, go to this <laughs> university. Maybe you want to shoot for this, right? Why that? Don't discourage them. Don't discourage them. We have plenty of doctors. We have plenty of uh, accountants. We have plenty of, uh, you know, uh, what do you say? Plenty of, uh, uh, you know, man, all them people them. We have plenty of them, right? We don't need we don't need necessarily more of them. Like our community is not suffering because we don't have enough doctors in the community. Our community is not suffering because we don't have, you know, enough, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, computer science majors in the community. Our community is not suffering because we don't have we don't have enough, uh, you know, uh, chemists and the like in, in the community. We're not suffering for that. We're not suffering because of, due to a lack of engineers. We're suffering due to a lack of knowledge. We don't have people that can educate us and to teach us. And you find this in what happens when we don't have people who are qualified, people who have in, people who have studied with the ulama, right? Uh, then we take as our leaders the ignorant ones. Then they have us out in graveyards making shirk. And this is not just to, Yanni, talk about that particular community, but every community that falls into that. Every community that falls into the likes of this bid'ah, every community that falls into the likes of the shirk and the like, and you'll find that they have up there, where they say, Sheikh so and so, Mawlana so and so, Ustaz such and such. And he's calling you to nothing but foolishness. Jahil, Rajulun Jahil, Bal, Mubil. He's ignorant, he's astray, and he leads others astray. This is the reality. Ma'am, but our situation will begin to change, inshallah ta'ala. If we have a massive amount of individuals who have studied, who have learned, who have taken from the ulama, because that's how you learn, by taking from the ulama, learning from the ulama, learning from the ulama. Naam? And it's important that we connect ourselves to the ulama, that we know what ilm is, and that we keep everybody upon their right level. So we give the student the respect that the student is due, but we don't start to give him the respect of an alim because we know he's not an alim, he's a student, a talib. Well, he's a alim, a talib. He's a student, he's not a, he's not a scholar. So we respect you and give you the respect of a student, but we're not going to treat you like a scholar. 
right? And so on and so forth. So he gave everybody the respect that they do, put them in the level that they're, that they're in, and so on and so forth. And that we don't raise anyone above their level, but we keep everyone upon their level and respect them as such. Now, so this is something I need, that uh, is a must that we mention and we remind ourselves of as, alhamdulillah, the brothers have children, and you may find from your child those who want to study, so encourage them. Uh, brothers themselves may want to go to study and they have families who are Muslims so their families should help them and should uh, 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 aid and assist them into seeking knowledge and so on and so forth and ala kullin what is the mana? this is my argument to these parents who keep saying this and that ala kullin what is stopping the child after having completed his studies in University of Medina or Umul Qura or with the ulama for you know years and 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 years was preventing them after that to to pursue a degree in something else. What's stopping them? Huh? Do these schools have age limits? Or do we find people in the eighties getting a bachelor's degree and so on and so forth? So what's stopping? What's the man there? If he wants to study now, let him study. If he want to do his undergrad in his 40s, fine. Want to do his undergrad in his 50s, fine. La la man there. There's nothing stopping it. So I don't want, you know, don't allow this, you know, shaitan to come and confuse you. Don't allow the shaitan to come and confuse you. There's nothing preventing an individual in his 40s and his 50s if he want to do undergrad in mathematics and so on and so forth. Fine, do undergrad in mathematics in your 50s. There's no problem with that. No problem. Now, alhamdulillah, there's no problem. There are many safe ways and permissible ways you can go about doing that now, especially in the age of the internet and so on and so forth. You don't even have to go there. You can do all your, all your courses right there from the from the computer inside of the comfort of your home, right? And so on and so forth. So you ain't got to worry about the, the haram nature of the intermingling and so on and so forth. And to the end of it, Alakulin, this is just some advice uh, for yeah, I wanted to give to the to the to the to the children and to the parents uh, more specifically with regards to their children and those who would like to study, that we as communities and as families, we should be aiding and helping and assisting them and not discouraging them uh, and so on and so forth. And he had them in being. فَنَكْتَفِ بِهَذَا الْقَدَرُ وَصَلَى وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِينَ مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَزَّاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا